Hey guys, I get asked pretty regularly about my recommendation for people wanting to buy their first drone and to take it travelling with them uh, around Australia. I thought this would be a really good opportunity to do a bit of a video on it um, for anyone that's in that position. So I'm on about my fourth drone now. Uh, they've all been the same, DJI brand. That'll be the brand that I'll always stick with uh, and the brand that I'd recommend to anyone else for a few reasons that I'll cover in this video. So the drone that I was filming the Big Lap of WA series on um, was also a DJI. It was a DJI Mavic Air. This one has superseded it. This is my new one. I've only had it a couple of weeks. This is the DJI Mavic Air 2. The reason I like DJI drones is that they're very easy to fly. They make it possible for anyone to shoot silky smooth cinematic looking footage. There's also a lot of, um, you know, because they're one of the bigger brands, there's, there's a lot of dealer support uh, pretty much anywhere you go. A lot of aftermarket accessories available for them. Uh, if you want to purchase new batteries later on, um, they're easy to find. And then the drones themselves are quite compact and, um, and operation is smooth and, and pretty trouble free. Also the supporting apps that DJI bring out, um, they update regularly. So yeah, all around they're a really good solid drone. So you've probably seen that there are much cheaper um, little drones available. Um, you know, that you might only pay a couple hundred bucks for that have a camera on them. You can't really compare something like that with these. Those cheaper drones are really just toys. Um, they don't have the range or the cameras on them. They're really quite cheap and basic. Most of them don't have a gyro um, for the camera. So the footage you're gonna get off them is gonna be shakier. You know, um, These have a gyro that moves around with, depending on what the drone's doing. It's that camera nice and still. So even though the drone's doing this, the camera stays like that. Um, and that's why you know it looks so cinematic and awesome. The other major difference between uh, higher end drones like this uh, is that they use the G GPS to lock their position. So for instance, um, if I take off and hover this thing here, and I'll show you in a sec, it'll hold its position despite, you know, if I had a 30 knot wind blowing, it'll just slightly sort of fight the wind and it will hold its position. A cheaper drone without GPS would get caught up in that wind and just slowly or, or quite quickly drift away, depending on how breezy it is. Um, so these are easier to fly, you're less likely to crash. Um, and then uh, with the safety features, if you do lose it, it'll come back to you. So with that, the safety features, there's quite a lot going on with these kind of drones. Um, there's obstacle avoidance sensors all over them. That's what these things are here uh, on the front and on the back. So if I were to fly this thing straight, you know, as hard as I can at a tree or a brick wall, it's going to warn me when, when I get within a distance and tell me that there's an obstacle coming up. If I ignore that and I keep flying, it'll actually stop dead in its tracks so that it won't allow you to, to fly into that brick wall and crash. Now you can't totally rely on that. Um, there's a reason why I'm on my fourth drone. Uh, so it's not something you rely on, but it's a nice, little, a nice little thing to have to maybe save your drone a couple of times during, your, during the time that you own it. So depending on what spec of drone or how much you spend on a drone, they'll have, a diff they'll have different sensors in different positions. I'll talk about that in a minute. Another cool thing they do is something they call the return to home feature. So say I fire this thing away um, and I've got 20 minutes of battery life and I get to about the 10 minute mark, so I should be heading back. Even if I've completely forgotten about how much battery capacity I've got left, it'll start to give me warnings saying based on wind conditions and distance and all the rest of it, you need to be flying this thing back home or you're gonna lose it. So it'll tell you that on your screen. If you just completely ignore that and you keep flying, that when that battery capacity gets to like a critically low level, it'll actually stop listening to you. It'll fly straight up into the air to a pre sort of determined height. And then it will fly back to where you took off from using that GPS again. And then it will land itself within a couple of hundred mil of where you took off. Same deal if you lose connectivity between your controller and your drone. So you've flown it out over the ocean or whatever and something's happened and your controllers just stop talking to your drone, it'll do the same thing. It'll fly up into the air, fly back to you and land within a couple hundred mil. So really cool. So this drone retails for about 1500 bucks. Um, that, for that money, you get the drone, you get a controller, you get one battery and a couple of charging cables and stuff like that. Um, I always buy what DJI refer to as the fly more combo. So it's the same deal, but you get two extra batteries giving you three in total uh, and a triple charger so you can charge them all at the same time. They also, often that kit comes in a nice little like padded bag or something. Anyway, I haven't actually flown this one yet. Like I said, I only got it a couple of weeks ago. So um, I'll stick it up in the air now and I'll show you the app that I'm using and, and give you a look at what it actually takes to get these things in the air and how to control it. Alrighty, so take the protective lens cover off. 
unfold all the props. Double tap to turn the drone on. This is the first time I've flown this one, so hopefully it goes right. Double tap the controller to turn it on. Launch the app. Oh, so it's automatically launched it for me, the DJI Fly or DJI Go or whatever it is. Right, it's telling me up here, takeoff is permitted, so it's automatically checked that I'm not near an airport or anything like that. It tells me my battery capacity here, we're only at 59%. And up here in the corner, it tells me how many satellites I'm connected with. So that looks good to take off. I hold both buttons in like this. It'll crank the motors. Uh, check pr proper propeller installation. Yeah, we've, I've already done that. So yeah, both um, joysticks in like that. And now if I press up, it'll fly up. Oh, I might just go a bit higher because the dogs. Dogs never like drones. So you can see what I was talking about. It's, it just holds its position because of the GPS. Really quite clever. So the controllers are really simple. The control, sorry. Up, down. Turn right, turn left. And the other side is backwards, forwards. It's not letting me go forwards because we're um, it's too close to me. Pan left, pan right. Now have a look at the, um, the camera, see how the gyro works. When we're panning, notice the camera is always operating on that um, gyro axis. So the footage is always gonna look smooth because of that. I just stepped in a turd. <laughs> you, I didn't think this would be a risk of drone flying. Ugh. Gross. I just hit the record button and it will start recording everything. And now I can fly it. Take some cool video, hey. I uh, take great photos as well. I don't really utilize it enough for that, I should. Anyway, like I said, I'd recommend anyone who's looking at getting a drone to seriously consider DJI. At the moment in early 2021, my top two picks would be the DJI Mavic Mini 2, which retails for about 750 to $1,000, depending on whether you get that fly more combo with the extra batteries or not. Um, or this one, the DJI Mavic Air 2, uh, which is retailing for 1500 to 1800, again, depending on how many batteries you get. There's also gonna be a DJI Mavic Pro in that lineup. At the moment, I think the Mavic Air 2 represents better value um, because the Pro is slightly heavier. It's not quite as compact. It's a little down on uh, flight time because of that. Um, and it, the only thing it's really got going for it is it's got extra sensors on the side. So if you're sort of flying to the side like that, it's got obstacle avoidance sensors there. Um, the other ones do not. But yeah, I just don't think for the extra thousand dollars you're paying for the Pro over the Air, I don't really think it represents great value at the moment. But do your own research when the time comes for you to buy your own, because I think they're going to release the uh, Mavic Pro 3 very shortly, um, and it's going to have to be an upgrade over what they've got now. So could be a really good drone. Rightio, so one of my main uh, reasons I wanted to film something for you today on drones was to talk about... Um, some of the rules that govern flying these things. I think it's really important to know all this before you buy one because it may, it may put you off, I don't know. Um, so a bit of backstory here. Uh, when drones first became affordable for the average Joe, things went a little bit mental. Uh, everyone was flying them all over the place, crashing into people, crashing into buildings and cars and flying them all over private property without um, consent uh, and generally just annoying people, invading privacy, just being annoying. There was a pretty quick knee-jerk reaction from the authorities uh, and rules were quickly put in place to, to, to limit the impact of drone use on people and animals and the environment. So the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, or CASA for short, released some rules on drone usage and I'll stick a link in the description for you to have a look at. Uh, but in a nutshell, basically, 
You can only fly these things during daytime. You cannot fly them at night. Um, you, you can't fly above 120 meters or 400 feet. You can't fly within 30 meters of another person. You can't fly within 5.5 Ks of an airport. You can't fly over or within private property without permission. And then there's some common sense stuff like you don't fly near an emergency situation. If there's a bushfire or whatever, you land your drone, you get out the way. If there's low flying aircrafts like helicopters or you know private fixed wing uh, planes or whatever, land your drone, get out the way because you don't want to crash into them. So CASA have some approved apps that are really helpful for working out where you are allowed to fly. Um, like Open Sky is one. I'll show you what that looks like on my phone now. This uses your phone's GPS to show your position on a map and it highlights any areas around you that'll impact drone usage like controlled airspace, airports, fires, etc. So CASA rules basically govern the airspace, but then there's also rules enforced by each individual state government uh, who have largely banned drone usage from national parks. Certainly that's the case in Western Australia anyway. These rules have actually probably relaxed if anything um, because I think people have largely been doing the right thing. It was before just a blanket rule that you could not fly one in national parks. Now they tend to, tend to allow you to fly them in national parks but not directly around natural attractions which um, will have you know, a lot of people around them. But it's important that you, that you have a look for yourself to make sure that you're allowed to fly it where you are. So. Um, contact the, the rangers or have a look online uh, or otherwise just keep your eyes out for signs. There's often pictures of a drone with a red cross through it, which obviously means you're not to fly your drone there. Many local councils also have their own rules, which is really annoying because there are a million bloody different local councils and they've all got their own take on drone usage. Most of them don't like them. Um, but yeah, speak to your local council, have a look online, speak to local rangers um, or whatever, because they've all got their own rules. And then just to confuse it a little more, um, for us in Western Australia, there's also rules uh, dictated by the Department of Biodiversity Regulations, um, which stipulate that we're not allowed to fly drones within 60 metres of whales, dugongs, seals or dolphins. Now that's for Western Australia, I've got to stress that. Um, and that's a state law. There's federal law by the, by the Australian National guidelines for whales and dolphins um, which say that you're not allowed to fly within 300 meters of them which is absolutely ridiculous but it's because they classify a drone um, as an aircraft so by that national guideline you could take your boat closer to a whale or a dolphin than you could fly your drone so really important that you check for the individual state you're in um, because you, you you may have to abide by those federal rules which say 300 meters. But for us in WA, it's 60 meters. Yeah, look, I don't agree with all those rules, but it, yeah, like I said, it's really important that we abide by them um, because in Australia, we've probably got it a, a little bit easier than other countries. Other countries came down really hard on drones. In some countries, you actually have to have an aircraft pilot's license to operate a drone um, and they treat them like like aircraft, you have to uh, be in contact with air traffic control, um, have a takeoff and a landing plan, and you gotta cordon off an area and have bloody maps out and map your route and all the rest of it. Like it goes a bit mental and it's really expensive to get those licenses. So it sort of makes drone usage for the average Joe impossible. So yeah, we gotta do the right thing so they don't come down that hard on us. Anyway, to wrap it all up, uh, if you're thinking of buying a drone for travel in Australia, take all of that into account. Certainly do your own research. Um, but I just wanted to be able to help you to make an informed decision. You're looking at somewhere between 750 and two grand to get something decent. Uh, you may not be able to always fight everywhere you want to. And you've always got to be prepared to, for, you know, for the reality that you could lose it, you could crash it. Um, that's a very real reality. Uh, I am on my fourth drone <laughs> in the last six or so years. Anyway, please don't think I'm trying to talk you out of buying a drone. Uh, me personally, I think they're a brilliant tool. I'll always have one. I reckon they're great. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to bring you as much information as I could so you can make an informed decision for yourself. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I hope that helps someone out there. Um, and I'll leave you with some footage I've taken with drones in the past. Cheers. <laughs>